Hello everyone and welcome to re-entry. In this video we are going to take a look at how the Gemini spacecraft could return back home with a splashdown in the ocean from its orbital missions. The spacecraft is currently in uh, space traveling around the Earth in an elliptical orbit. The orbit got its highest point, that's alt, uh, apogee, uh, at 120.5 nautical miles. When the spacecraft passes this point, it will then start to fall down towards Earth and will hit the lowest points in orbit, that's perigee, at 84.2 nautical miles before it will climb back up to apogee. And this is something that it does now basically for infinity if it hadn't been for kind of some uh, orbital perturbations. So with this current orbit, we will not be able to get back home. To be able to get back home, we will need to somehow uh, reduce our orbit so that it in intersects the atmosphere or even the surface of Earth to get a proper entry angle. And from an Earth orbit, we want the entry angle to be around 2 degrees. So if I now go into the spacecraft itself, uh, we will start to kind of configure our spacecraft for uh, performing this deorbit burn, uh, which is also called the retrograde burn. If I take a look at the external view here, you can see that the spacecraft contains a few sections. The topmost section is the spacecraft itself, that's the capsule, the Gemini capsule. And this is where the two astronauts are uh, staying. It's a pressurized cabin and there's a couple of systems that are able to keep the astronauts alive for long duration missions. Most of that equipment is located in the adapter section. That's the lower section here. Uh, this contains the fuel cells, that's the primary power source, as well as um, oxygen and some other things that are required. And uh, this middle section contains the uh, retrograde engines. That's our retro section. So we have adapter, retrograde, and then we have the capsule itself, that's the re-entry module that will re-enter the atmosphere. There's a heat shield where this red uh, piece here is. And then you can see that there's a couple of thrusters on this white section. This is the thrusters that are used to maintain our attitude in orbit. Since we're going to jettison both of these two parts before entering uh, back home, we will lose these jets. But you can see that on the top here, there's also some jets uh, available for attitude control. So we will need to, first of all, switch the power source and uh, internal system source into the internal systems, as well as enabling the reaction control system. This is called the o uh, o OAMS, and this is the RCS. So basically, the first thing that we need to do in order to perform a retrograde is to switch everything to internal systems. So I will first of all plan a retrograde burn at Apogee. That's uh, one hour and 18, second, 18 minutes uh, away. And there's this orbital cursor that you can move around to just get timing information and then perform maneuvers and planning. So I know that uh, this is the phase. So Zero is always perigee, that's your lowest point in orbit, and 180 is our highest point in orbit. The retrograde engines will be able to take us down uh, to a splashdown from a, uh, from these kind of lower Earth orbits uh, like this. So I'm going to plan a burn at uh, apogee, that's 180. So if I now go back into the cockpit, uh, there's a tool that allows me to uh, to do this. I have a retro at next apogee, I could use this, or I could uh, select uh, an, a retrograde point using the orbital cursor. So I'm just going to hit that button, and you will see that this doesn't really work. The reason for this is that mission control or ground will need to be able to uplink data to our computer. Uh, we'll need to make sure that the computer is running to perform this. Now, if you take a look at this light over here, I will request the, bu the burn. And, okay, yeah, so that didn't illuminate. Um, I'll, of course, fix that. Then, uh, then 
The thing that now happened is that ground uplinked a message to us uh, in which is core 19 and I'll go ahead and read that and that's basically um, a time uh, to retrograde and using core 19 I can basically see the amount of seconds left before uh, I have planned my retrograde engine ignition. So that basically leaves us with about 1 hour and 15 minutes until uh, the burn. So let's prepare for, uh, everything that's needed. So first I will go into uh, checklists and I will find the entry section. Do you have pre-retro, 256 seconds to retro, one minute to retro and post-retro jettison. Those four checklists are um, the ones that we will go through in this video, uh, which will make sure that we are on an entry trajectory, ready to hit the atmosphere to perform the entry and landing itself. So I'm going to go ahead and start this checklist. And I'm going to press run. The first thing that it asks me to do is to perform a sequential lights test. So I will make sure that this is set to bright and then uh, there's the switch next to it saying sequential light test. So I'm going to use this to perform this test. The first test is the amber lights. You can see that if I now set this to the test switch to amber, all of the amber bulbs are illuminated. And secondly, I'll perform the red and green light bulb test and I want to make sure that all of those critical light bulbs that I need mostly during entry, such as the sequential things, are uh, working. So that's the sequential light test. Uh, the next is to uh, reconfigure our fuses. So I want to um, power the retrograde engines uh, by setting this to ARM. And then uh, we want to set our event timer to 20 minutes and I'll explain to you uh, why pretty soon. But first of all, I'm going to hit to uh, set this to stop and make it count down. And then I'm going to increase the minutes to 20. There we go. And then I'm going to decrease uh, first the six digits in the end to zero and then the one to zero. Okay, we're now uh, set the event timer to 20 minutes, but I'm not gonna start it yet. And I'm gonna explain to you very soon why this is important to do. Then uh, we'll continue, continue to depower stuff. Uh, you can configure lighting as you want. You can, you know, set the lights using this, I'll keep it in the middle. If you want it uh, into more dark configuration, you can also, also uh, set some lights in the front. You can see that you can also have red if you want, but I'll leave it to off and then let this light do its main job uh, because uh, I want it to be nice and bright for this video. All right, let's set the fans on and then we'll uh, change our radio because uh, during entry, you want to use the re-entry antenna instead of the adapter antenna. And there's a couple of antennas uh, here, and uh, these will be jettisoned as we remove the sections. So remember to change the antenna or you will lose comms. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is to perform our battery test. So then I'll set this to BT, that's battery test. Let me just uh, go down here. Let's test these batteries. So to test the battery, set this to BT. The voltmeter will now uh, read the, the voltage of a selected battery. And then uh, on the main batteries, you can see that it has non-position off and then test. It's important to only keep one of these in test at a time. If, uh, if not, you will break them. So I will first test battery one. You can see that it now it's now 24 volts. Battery two. Also 24 volts, battery 3, 24 volts, and lastly, battery 4, also 24 volts. So everything is uh, fine with the batteries. And the, this is important because uh, currently the main f uh, fuel cells are powering the spacecraft. But once we jettison the adapter, the fuel cells will be gone and we will lose power 
if we don't switch to internal power. Uh, the internal power is mainly uh, these four batteries here. So we will then turn this on at a later time. Uh, we'll continue to depower some more adapter specific things. And then we will uh, set up our event timer. Remember that I could use core 19 to see the amount of seconds left to the burn. I can use this to start the event timer and 1200 seconds that's equal to 20 minutes. So 20 minutes before the burn I'm going to uh, start the event timer. So now I'm just using time scale to get to that uh, point. So Okay, getting close. Four, three, two, one. Okay, the event timer is running. The reason for using the event timer here is that this countdown method uh, doesn't really work and it's a little bit hard to see the ignition time here uh, we want to be able to use the event timer to see the ignition time uh, because it's close to the other instruments and secondly the computer will be off uh, for uh, about 10 minutes during this countdown so what's uh, important to do is to set the event timer to 20 minutes so that it matches this countdown and then we will turn off this uh, module uh, pretty soon it will take 10 minutes to load the re-entry module and that's the program that the software or the computer will run during re-entry. This is located on a tape which is uh, this system here. The tape will spend about 10 minutes on playing through this entire program to load it into the memory of the onboard computer. So during this time the computer will be unavailable and this is why it will be off for about 10 minutes. Okay, so we have uh, the event timer running and we can now go ahead and change our computer mode to re-entry. And notice that the comp light is off and then that the green light on the auxiliary tape system is green. This means that uh, it's playing and while this is playing it means that the computer is loading data. So now I will not be able to use the computer at all. So I will now go ahead and time skip for those 10 minutes it takes to load this. Once this extinguishes, loading is complete. There we go. That leaves us about eight minutes for uh, preparing the rest of the things for our retro burn. Go ahead and start the computer. Everything should be now fine. And that's the end of this first checklist. Now things are going to be a little bit more hectic. So the two, 256 seconds to retrograde uh, is our next uh, checklist. The reason for this is that there's a variable inside of the computer which is named TR. That's the time to retrograde. And it will start counting down at 256 seconds. So now I'm going to hit run. I'll leave the checklist open for reference. And then I'm going to time scale to about 4 minutes and 16 seconds. That, uh, that's those 256 seconds. Uh, once you hit TR, the um, sequential lights here will illuminate, indicating that the re retro sequence is about to start. So now we are going to uh, power our um, capsule using uh, the internal systems instead of the fuel cells. Uh, we are going to enable the uh, prop motor valves for our reaction control system. Remember that the OMS, which we are currently using for attitude control, will be removed. Uh, we are going to check our propellant temperature and pressure of the reaction control system A. I can also check B. And we are going to reconfigure a couple of things. Uh, first the radio and then we want the the needles here to show a specific attitude. 
then we are going to send our control mode to rate command re-entry. That's basically uh, using the RCS for rate command. Then we are going to depower the OMS and enable the controller powers for RCS. And this uh, is um, uh, to be able to use our RCS once we enable it. This is what we're going to do next. So first we will uh, press the indicate retro attitude that will tilt our um, uh, attitude indicator slightly to more match our retrograde attitude. And then we are going to enable RCS by pressing this button. And now we should be able to uh, maneuver the spacecraft. And if I take a look out the window, we can see that I can fire the jets and they are working well. So I'm going to uh, set the spacecraft to uh, somewhere like this. I'll just follow the pointers for now. Set the pilots to also show attitude. And then um, let's go through here just to verify everything. One minute to retro checklists. Clear. Okay. The next thing, uh, when the countdown reads one minute, we will perform uh, a few more steps. And this is basically executing the burn itself. So I'm going to hit run here. And I'm going to go to that pitch down attitude. This will basically point the retrograde engine slightly up uh, to help us uh, with our current trajectory. Twenty seconds. At uh, the one minute mark, we will continue to uh, seal the lines going from the adapter section into uh, the spacecraft itself, the, the re-entry section which we are sitting, and then separate it. Okay, one minute. Separate the lines, that's oxygen and stuff. Uh, and we are going to separate the power cables. Uh, nothing happened, so that means that we are now uh, fully powered, everything is well. So we can go ahead and separate the stage. And there she goes. Okay, at uh, TR 30 seconds, we are going to arm our retrograde rockets. One, two, three, four. And as you can see, the four retrograde rockets are now exposed and ready for ignition. At five seconds, we are going to arm uh, auto retro. And one second after ignition, we are going to uh, fire them manually just in case. And we are also going to set the event timer to up. Okay, I hit the wrong one, but up. Anyways, that's fine. And now you can see the uh, current retrograde uh, burn uh, counting up on the delta V indicator. This is basically showing me the current burn uh, vector of the retrograde engine. And you can see that I have now burned about uh, 320 feet per second in the retrograde direction. The next step will be uh, now, and I will set this one to free. And then I'm going to, uh, oops, at 45, I'm going to uh, arm this and turn on the squib and perform the separation. Okay, start post retro checklist. The uh, retrograde uh, section is now uh, also removed, which means that now the heat shield is exposed. This will uh, now let me travel through the atmosphere. But this is, it is very important to perform this right. So in the next video, I'm going to uh, uh, 
uh, do an entry from this condition. But first, we will complete our post retro jettison checklist. I can depower the retrogrades and the rockets, and I'll set the platform to the computer. I'll set the sensitivity a little bit higher. I don't need controller B, that's the pilot's controller for entry. Uh, the commander will perform the entry. And uh, I will power down a couple of things no longer needed. Fuel cells, turn those off. In terms of the switching, and then uh, one important is to arm the landing system. So with the landing system armed, uh, we should be uh, ready to uh, start deploying chutes uh, when we start landing. Uh, also, take a note of the uh, delta v vector here. So you could do that in a couple of uh, ways. You could use notes here, uh, or you can use, uh, for example, a data form, a blank paper. And you can say that uh, Let's see, delta V of uh, retrograde was 319 on the x-axis and then 0 on the y-axis and uh, that's a negative and uh, 10 in the z-axis and that's a uh, positive. Just to store this for later. Okay, and then uh, we are going to start the entry checklists. Uh, I will do that in the next video because there's quite a lot of uh, ground to cover before that. But for now, if I now hit F3, you can see that uh, this is the planned splashdown point of the spacecraft. This is where I'm currently at, and I will travel across the entire um, lower part of Africa before uh, hitting the uh, entry interface which is 400,000 above earth to perform the entry itself. So with that I thank you for watching. If you like these kinds of tutorials uh, please let me know in the comments below, give me feedback and hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot!